So as we continue on with the presentation, I have a few favorite slides. The one that I showed you at the beginning of the presentation, since 1900, the stock market has overcome anything that's come its way, any horrific act, any thing revolving around the economy, the stock market has survived and the stock market will survive this minor correction that we're having now. We are not concerned whatsoever. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't realize in any given year, when you look at the S&P 500 index and you look at the entry year from the peak to the trough, the average over the last, this is a, a good statistic over the last 36 years, the average swing is about 14.2%. That means from the high to the low in most years, the market swings 14.2%. Ironically, from the all-time high last May till now, the S&P is off just about that. Year to date, the S&P is down 10%. And it doesn't feel good, but it's really part of investing. Unfortunately, we just haven't seen it since 2011, before that going back to the Great Recession of 2008. So in any given year, the market could swing 14.2%. And as you can see, over the last 36 years, the market had positive returns in 27 out of 36 years. I have a saying in the office, the market is, has more sunny days than it does rainy days. The stock market over time goes up more than it goes down. And this is a great chart to kind of show people and remind investors that the stock market, for it to swing like it is now or in any given year, comes with the territory of investing. And then one of my other all-time favorite slides is the green bar is if you were invested in the S&P 500 index, the blue bar is bonds, and the gray bar is a 50-50 portfolio. In any given year, and this goes back to 1950, so it gives you a pretty good indication of what the averages are. In any given year, you could be down 39%, which happened to be 2008, recent in our minds, you can be up as much as 47% in stocks in any given year. Now with bonds, you can also be down in any given year over the last several years, down 8%, up as much as 43%. In a 50-50 portfolio in any given year, if you had 50% of your money invested in the stock market, 50% of your money invested in bonds, you would be down 15% or up 33%. Now that's in any given year, and as we shared with you, we would never recommend that any investor invest in the stock market if they knew they needed to pull their money out over the next one, or two, three years. We would never, ever recommend that as a strategy. Now, when you look at five-year rolling periods, so picture 1950 starts a five-year rolling period, 1951, 1952. There's a lot of five-year rolling periods going back to 1950. For the worst five-year rolling period in stocks, you would have been down 3%. So can you imagine the most terrible five years being invested in the stock market at the end of five years down 3% up as much as 26%. With bonds, down 2%, up as much as 23%. With the 50-50 portfolio, your worst five-year holding period was up 1%, your best was up 21%. Now let's take it out over 10 years. Once again, 1950 starts a 10-year rolling period, 1951 and so forth. In stocks, you could have the worst 10-year rolling period going back to 1950. You would be down 1%, up 19%. Bonds, up 1%, being your worst 10-year rolling period, up 16%, your best. In a 50-50 portfolio, up 2%, being your worst, up 16%, being your best. Now, over 20 years, in stocks, the worst 20-year rolling period since 1950, up 7% in stocks, your best up 17%. In bonds, your worst 20-year rolling period up 
your best up 12% in a 50-50 portfolio, up 5%, and your best up 14%. As you can see, stocks and bonds are risky in any given year, but over time, they're not as risky. And these two slides and that one showing all of the events that have come through time, the stock market has survived. And this is why we're not panicking with this correction. We've been expecting it. We made changes in the portfolio because of our expectations. And we're pretty sure at the end of the year, our due diligence and the thought that we put into structuring the portfolios will play out. So over the next 10 months, at the end of the year, we're pretty confident that the markets will look a lot better than they do right now. It's just because it started on January 1st that a lot of investors, for some reason, are really concerned about what's going on. We are not concerned whatsoever. So why do we feel, and Marty kind of hit on it, and Ryan also shared some information, why we don't feel we're going into a recession? There's no guarantees, but we're pretty sure we're not going into a recession. Why? A recession has really never happened when you had declining oil prices, a strengthening dollar, foreign countries with economic slowdown. Who cares that China's having a rough go of it? They had a great time. They're having some problems, but we're not having problems. Our economy's doing good. But the headlines are really just interesting. As Ryan said, how we're so correlated to whether it be the price of oil or the Chinese slowdown. A tightening labor market. Marty hit on this. This is really great news. We're putting people to work. And all of a sudden, in the fourth quarter of 2015, they're getting a little bump in pay. We haven't had that in quite some time. The consumer makes up two-thirds of the economy. It's important for the consumer to feel good about their job and to be paid a little bit more money. Add on to that the price of gas being down. Consumers have had a raise because they're not putting so much money, so much dollars into their gas tank like they were for so many years. So that's all good news. The improving consumer balance sheets, you see the personal debt. Unfortunately, the consumer is not spending a lot of their savings out in the economy, something that a lot of economists are befuddled by. We are actually happy that the consumer is now paying attention to saving some money. That's one of the great lessons that came out of the Great Recession was consumers were living way, way beyond their means. They never saved any money, and all of a sudden, the rug was taken out from underneath them, and they all of a sudden thought about retirement. And I always say you get one opportunity to retire. If you blow it, you can't go back and make up for it. Consumers are now using some of that money to pay off debt, as Marty said, and also to save a few dollars, which is really important. So the summary of the evening. We expect volatility to continue. It's not going to go away. China will not bring down the U.S. economy. Oil will hurt, will hurt our economy, but not to the same effect that financials hurt the economy during that Great Recession, 2007 through 2009. There is both weakness and signs of strength domestically and overseas. And then last but not least, I know the question's going to come up. What happens in the presidential election year? Marty did some homework on this. Really, doesn't really matter whether a Democrat is in or a Republican and who's leading, who's not. At the end of the day, it's really the fundamentals of the economy. Now, this year's a little different. Who would think we would have Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump? So as the cartoon says, are you saying that it all comes down to Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders? Capitalism versus socialism. It's going to be a really interesting year to see how this plays out. A lot of people thought that Donald Trump would not make it past phase one. Well, he's well into phase two and going beyond. And who would ever think that Bernie Sanders would be the Democratic leading candidate? It's a real interesting year. So we'll see how this plays out, and we'll be keeping our eyes on it.